Once again, we find ourselves deep in the Mojave Desert, at one of the most unique and immersive events on the planet. After a year lost to the pandemic, we're catching up with familiar faces. One of those faces is also one of the most creative builders we've ever met and a driving force behind the Wasteland Vehicle community. Hi, my name is Spud and I am the head of the Blackfoot Tribe here at Wasteland again. And we try to build the most obscure and dangerous and weird looking vehicles that we possibly can. Here at Black Thumb, we have a bunch of new projects. Uh, we've got our Ford Falcon tank, which was actually a 30-year-old ex-Monster Jam tank that was found in our backyard in Hollywood. We've resurrected, put a new motor in it, and set it all up to drive around the desert here and have a lot of fun in. Uh, we have a bunch of new track vehicles by one of our tribe members, Rivet, who's an amazing engineer. We've got a Bug, which is a supercharged um, Beetle. We have a new Ford Control, which is actually built on a K5 Blazer chassis. We've been building a lot of stuff over the, over the last couple of years. We've missed being here and uh, we're happy to be back. There's a small crossover from the rat rod culture into the post apocalyptic world. Uh, a lot of the PA cars tend to be fairly rusty, they tend to be fairly beaten, fairly built out of stuff that's, you know, most people just throw away. Wasteland Weekend um, is more than just tribes, it's way more than just people getting together. It, they, we've become family. You've heard the word family used a lot in rat rod culture, and you'll hear it here too. Dirty, rusty, awesome, family. After a year off due to the pandemic, we are so excited to be back. You'll likely recognize Wasteland Weekend co-founder and event director Jared Butler from our last visit here, where he debuted a super cool 39 Dodge. Now, he's up in the ante with a vehicle from the actual filming of Mad Max Fury Road. So this thing started, probably started its life in 1948 in the UK, went to Australia, went to Africa, back to Australia, now into the United States, and she's running again. Uh, but if you take a look, the roof was chopped, which gives it this cool look. But then if I get inside this thing, which is not easy to do, I am basically looking out of both the sunroof and this tiny windshield at the same time. And with these louvers on the side, you can kind of see what's on either side of you, but not well. It has these things. These things pop up. I've actually never done that before. There they go. Oh, I just broke that. No, I didn't. It's just bad. I'll fix that. It looks like a rust bucket on the inside and a little bit on the outside, but they've got a kill switch. They've got it all wired up. They even kept the horn live. The four-wheel drive, we haven't tried yet, but that's going to be the next thing we're going to do. Put in a roll cage, of course. And uh, it's almost exactly in the condition it was back for filming of Mad Max Fury Road. It's one of the few cars from any of the Mad Max films that is now in private hands. And we're really excited to have it out here where it belongs at Wasteland Weekend. So when I first saw Fury Road, what excited me about it, it was, was the first time I'd seen lifted rat rods. And so I immediately went out and the, the car that I had out here last time that you guys featured is a 1939 Dodge. I wanted a pre-war car that would make a really nice rat rod, but then I wanted to lift it and make it a four-wheel drive. So that's the intersection that I really like, that sort of post-apocalyptic off-road ready mixed with the rat rod aesthetic. We, we worship rust out here. Oh, and rust there is, and patina, and all kinds of crazy artistic creations. Dust, and we are at Wasteland Weekend, and we travel here from San Diego. We are part of the Black Tribe. And I'm Dave, or Two Speed, 
is also black from tribe. We came up, like we said, from San Diego. Uh, we're out here hanging out at Wasteland Weekend 2021, I believe it is. Time's a little iffy at this point. You know, During our last Wasteland visit, these two introduced us to the infamous Horvette. Since then, we were lucky enough to uh, fall backwards into a 1969 427 Big Block Chevy. Uh, it was capped in December of 1968. It's all numbers matching. It's been decked. Uh, we believe it was a 390 horsepower original. We got a Whalen Tunnel Ram on there, original 80s, 70s, 80s piece. Uh, twin Edelbrock 500 CFM with a uh, Hellborn style scoop. C3 headers, um, 700R4 transmission still backing it. The electric water pump, mini high amp alternator, um, upgraded cooling system, we did some power steering while we were at it. Um, we, we couldn't fit an ATI, so we went for a uh, 74 Corvette uh, distributor, Excel, uh, Hall effect sensor upgrade on it. A bunch of fun goodies and stuff, so you really moved a lot more than you did before. Maybe we said second home. It's a chance to be here. Sometimes it's our real home. It's a chance to come out and be ourselves and people who are just like us. If you haven't been to Wasteland, you need to fucking come here. Pictures do not do it justice. Videos do not do it justice. You have to come here. And we wholeheartedly agree. This event is something you have to experience to truly understand. There's so much going on here. From tribes and camps, to vehicles, to events and activities, and even a fully functional communication center with a radio broadcast, newspaper, a post office, and much more. Hi, I'm the Swede from the WCC, the Wasteland Communication Corporation, right here in the heart of Wasteland City. I'm the guy who runs the radio station here, and, you know, some other things around the house. It's a pretty big involved operation. We've got the post office, we run a print newspaper every day, the FM radio station, we've got communications radio going, a whole meteorology department to do uh, weather forecasts for every day, and a legal department. So many people, even if they don't have a theme camp, even if they're not like in the heart of the city, they come here and with these incredible creations and it's, you know, it's not quite like a rat rod, but there's so much rat rod culture like just baked into the post apocalyptic field stuff that it's, it's like nowhere else on earth, because not only are all these vehicles here, when you go to a regular car show, even if you have like a section set aside for post-apocalyptic vehicles, or even if there's like five of them that came out together, you're on a city street, you're in a downtown, it's fun, you're shooting the shit with all your friends. But here, it's like a full 360 immersive environment. So if you take a picture of the car, everything in the background, everyone's standing near it, everything's in costume. It's just, it's like being in a giant movie set, but for like half a week. So my ride parked right outside uh, is WCC 012. We just serialize all our vehicles because we're a big corporation and we do all the bureaucracy stuff. Uh, but it used to be a 1968 International Lodestar 1700A that someone at some point had uh, moved the rear axle forward on a little bit, cut off the frame, put a box on it, and turned it into a mobile tattoo and piercing parlor. So what are some things that people should do while they're out here? Any events or anything they have to see or have to do that you suggest? If you do come to Wasteland Weekend, uh, there's a few things that are definitely like bucket list items you absolutely have to do. You have to check out the Atomic Cafe for drinks. You have to come here to the Wasteland Communication Corporation, uh, go to the post office, send some mail, all that stuff. But there are two main car show things. The Black Thumb Tribe has a meet and greet where they park all these great cars together and you can just mingle with all of the other car builders. It's a lot like a traditional car show where everyone there is bringing something and you can exchange ideas and get inspired by what each other are building and there's it's a it's a weird thing because you know we're all kind of copying each other a little bit but every you know every new idea gets kind of dispersed uh, within our our whole family here and that's great and then of course you know the whole city just take a walk through the city and just look at all the crazy uh, the other vehicle event that happens is the official car show and car cruise Boy, do we ever love a good car show and cruise. I'm um, Scott White, and uh, we're out here at Wasteland Weekend with my tribe Black Thumb. And, uh, you know, we're just a bunch of crazy car guys and fabricators and such. And I uh, brought my Beetle out. I made it for Wasteland Weekend after the... Uh, 
After the first time I came out, I went around, took pictures of all the cars, and went back to my camp and said, I'm bringing a car next year. And I did. It's a 1973 Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, when I got it, it didn't run or drive or anything. It was all kind of rusted shut. But uh, I kind of beat it into submission, made all the rusty parts work again. I didn't actually replace them. Of the stuff like the, the pedals were all rusted together like push the gas down and the brake and the clutch went with it i did all the work to it i made fenders out of rebar they actually have the car's name the car's name is romp um and that you can see it in the fenders and there's lots of little details like uh chainsaw chains along drip rails and there's pennies as as uh as washers along the side and have valves on the hood as, as the, the spikes I just rebuilt the motor. It's it's now a 1641. Um, it's got a balanced crank, a uh, small cam, and uh, some high flow heads. And I ported and polished it, and I put an AMR 500 supercharger on it on top with a um, what is it? IDF 40 carb, and uh, I hand fabricated the um, intake and the carb mount. And uh, it goes, it goes pretty good. It's got about 80 horsepower. So people ask me, they see this is the supercharger and they're like, is it fast? And I go, I go, um, no, it's a Volkswagen. The rat rod culture and the post-apocalyptic is kind of, kind of the same thing. We don't need pretty paint jobs, you know, we need uh, functional things. And when we tend to really reuse a lot of you know, stuff that we have to make, to make everything unique and uh, make it our own style, you know, and we're not afraid of rust. And, things that rattle and shake to death. Obviously, we're talking about cars. Um, you don't have to be an automotive genius to make a cool car. You know, like, put your flavor on it, put your style on it. Um, don't be afraid to try something dumb, you know? It might be really cool, <laughs> you know? Like many here, whether part of the Black Thumb tribe or any other group, or even running solo, builders and enthusiasts, out here, they just seem to get it. If you love this style of vehicle, this genre, and this community as much as we do, do yourself a favor and grab tickets to the next Wasteland Weekend. As always, build, drive, enjoy.